A very warm welcome to Campsie Parish Church and our service for the third Sunday in Lent. It's great to have you worshipping with us today. And wherever you are and whoever you're with, whether you're with your family or whether you're on your own, we're all gathering together in spirit to worship the living God. As we continue our journey through Lent and we look at the dramatic events of Jesus' last few days and weeks on earth, we consider the meaning of these events both at the time and for us today. Our passage this morning considers the cleansing of the temple when Jesus overturned the tables of the moneylenders in his righteous anger. It's a dramatic incident and a well-known one and the Jesus that we meet here bears little resemblance to the gentle Jesus, meek and mild of the Sunday school hymn that many of us will have grown up with. But what does it mean for us today? Let's turn to worship God. Through the creation of the universe, you love us, Lord. Through guidance, call and commandment, you love us, Lord. Through the gift of your son, Jesus, you love us, Lord. Through our worship and our response to your word, we love you, Lord. We join together in singing our first hymn, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind, forgive our foolish ways.
Let us pray. Lord, when we approach you in worship, we praise you that you fling wide the gates. When we enter your courts, you clear a path before us. Your welcome knows no bounds, and your love no conditions. Lord, we are bold to approach you. For it is your will that all who wish should meet you. Wherever you are is holy ground, and your presence transforms our everyday surroundings into a sacred space. Lord, we are bold to approach you. And so, with your welcome ringing in our ears, may our hearts always be prepared to make room for others as you make room for us. Good and gracious God, there are times when we choose not to follow the rules. There are times when we stray off course. There are times when we choose the path of sin. In a time of quiet, we bring before you those times when we have failed to keep your commandments, when we have decided that we know better. The psalmist writes, clear me from hidden faults. And so we pray with the psalmist, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Forgiven, loved and free, we enter this time of worship with gratitude. Open our ears to hear your word. Open our eyes to see your truth. Open our mouths to sing forth your praise. Open our hearts to love and care for your people. So be it. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our reading today is from John chapter 2, reading from verses 13 to 22. Jesus cleanses the temple. The Passover of the Jews was near. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Seal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years. And will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. Amen. It's celebration time. It's the most important day of the year. In a sense, it's the birthday of the Jewish nation, the anniversary of the first Passover and the exodus from Egypt, a celebration of freedom and of nationhood. And to mark this most special of feasts, anyone who could would go to Jerusalem, to the temple, the holy city, the seat of the Lord God Almighty and the source of the holiness both of the city and of the nation. Jerusalem would have been buzzing. The population doubled and tripled in size for the occasion. Along with all the extra worshippers, there would be all the extra merchandise, the blemish-free sheep and calves and doves for the sacrifices, approved coins for the temple tax, coins which did not bear the image of the emperor. The temple would be crammed full of bustling and chattering people, customers and vendors. But whatever they were there for, the rites and rituals. Was it worship? Remember the prophet Micah. 
With what shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with a thousand rams, with ten thousand rivers of oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. And from Isaiah, the multitude of your sacrifices, what are they to me, says the Lord? I have more than enough of burnt offerings, of rams and the fat of fattened animals. I have no pleasure in the blood of bulls and lambs and goats. When you come to appear before me, who has asked this of you, this trampling of my courts? Stop bringing meaningless offerings. Your incense is detestable to me. This incident also appears in the other Gospels and of course the writers of those Gospels suggest that Jesus was angry because the vendors were cheating the people. But this is not John's point. In fact, it's likely that the trade was entirely reasonable. Animals and birds for the sacrifices had to be perfect and pure and many worshippers, if they could have, have access to such an animal, would have travelled a long distance to get to the, the temple. The difficulty of transporting a perfect animal and it still being perfect at the end of the journey would be enormous. Coins had to be appropriate for the purpose, that is, without a graven image, and the normal coinage of the day would be useless for the purpose. John, however, rather than being concerned about any possible corruption, seems to be concerned about the very practices of sacrifice and temple tax. Although this incident almost certainly happened towards the end of Jesus' life, not long before the crucifixion, John, with a theological perspective, places it at the start of Jesus' ministry. It's his manifesto. Following in the line of the prophets, Jesus is declaring that there's more to worship than sacrifice and tax. These festivals at their institution were about celebration and thanksgiving to God for his deliverance of the Jewish nation. But they had become ritualistic and legalistic, hidebound with regulations and lacking in the joy and gratitude which had characterised them at their inception. Jesus has come to establish the kingdom of God. Jesus has come to renew the worship of the people. He's come to renew the vision of the people, of their God, understanding of their God. He's come to renew God's honour and to refresh the worship of the people. His concern here was for God's glory, but it was also for the authenticity of the worship of the people. And considering the authenticity of the worship, it's important to remember that the Jewish people and the religious leaders would not have been aware that they were doing anything wrong. They were following the custom of centuries and obeying the regulations as they understood them. But when Jesus came, he came to institute a new era. And so he swept all of that aside and pointed towards a new way of worshipping, which was more concerned with right hearts than right rituals. Let's leave Jerusalem behind for now and come back to the present. If Jesus were to enter our places of worship, what customs of ours would he want to challenge? If Jesus were to experience our worship, how authentic would he find it? If Jesus were to meet us in our worship, what would he make of the state of our hearts? And of course, the truth is that Jesus does meet us in our worship. And for him, worship is hugely significant and enormously important. Vast swathes of the Bible are given over to the regulation of worship. And this tells us that the quality of what we offer in worship matters. It's tempting to think that worship is the responsibility of the worship leader, the minister or whoever else is leading a particular service. But when we speak of liturgy, and all services have a liturgy, 
We speak literally of the work of the people. In other words, worship is not something that I, as your minister, provide as a service for you. It is something that we, as a worshipping congregation, create together. When we come before God in worship, true worship means opening our hearts to him. True worship means being prepared to listen to him. And true worship means being prepared to act on what we hear. To go back to Micah, what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. During this pandemic, worship has left the building. God, of course, was never enclosed in the building in the first place. When this is over, whenever that is, when we return to our sanctuary for worship, when we can gather all together again, what will our worship look like? It would be very easy to go back to just what we were doing before. But is that what God wants? Is that the kind of worship which engages our hearts and opens us to his presence? Or is this an opportunity to discover what kind of worship God does want? Jesus told the Samaritan woman whom he met by the well, Believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. A time is coming and has now come when true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for they are the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. Can we discover together what it means to worship in spirit and in truth? True worship is worship where we meet God, and we cannot meet God and remain unchanged. We cannot meet God without taking that encounter out into the world with us when we go. We cannot meet God without being the means through which others are also changed. As we move towards gathering together again as a congregation, physically, in the same place. United in person as well as in spirit, let us also move towards seeking God, asking him what kind of worship gives him honour and glory. And let's determine that our worship, when we are gathered together in worship once more, will be honouring to God, authentic and acceptable to him, renewing and sustaining for us and for all those whose lives we touch. Amen. Our hymn speaks of this true worship which Micah described. We sing, inspired by love and anger.
Loving God, as we join together once more this morning, we bring to you our world of so much pain, so much need and sorrow, a world you care for so deeply that you willingly gave your all for it, living and dying among us through your only Son, Jesus Christ. We bring to you this morning the causes of so much suffering, the human sin of greed, denying the many their share of this earth's riches to the benefit of the few. The sin of intolerance in our community and the wider world. Dividing families and nations through our refusal to accept others as they are, just as you accept us, no matter what. The sin of pride, thinking too highly of ourselves and too poorly of others, who may not fit in to our way of thinking or living. And the sin of indifference, caring too little about you, too little about anything. Reach out in your mercy and heal our wounds. Help us to remember that we are part of the body of Christ. So may we be ears that listen, even when there are no more words. Hands that hold gently and set to work alongside each other. Hands that do not push others out of the way, but instead clear a space. And so we pray for all those who walk through life with a sense of guilt. Those who are overwhelmed by their own sense of failure, troubled by their sense of shame, and depressed about their own weakness. Help them, Lord, to understand that in you, they can find true forgiveness and a new beginning. We pray for those in our community who continue to provide support and services to our community and the most vulnerable during this time. We think of all the hospital staff, teachers, shop workers, and all those in this world who often we overlook, but without them, we would struggle to live our lives. Support them all in their work. Inspire us through their example and equip them in the days that are ahead. And we pray for all those impacted by COVID in their lives. The loved ones that have been lost, the livelihoods that have been taken away and the uncertainty of the future that is all too real for some. We pray for those in our government in all their decisions, give them a proper sense of the responsibility entrusted to them and grant that they may work not for themselves, but for the good of all. Almighty God, bring friendship to the lonely, reconciliation to the estranged and comfort to the bereaved. In our homes and our families, our schools and our places of work, our country and our world. May your love be shared among us, bringing hope and healing. Lord, in your mercy, reach out in love. And so we join together this morning in the words of the prayer that your son Jesus Christ taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
go into the week. Open your hearts to God, meet him in that temple and be changed. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and forevermore. Amen. Many thanks to everyone for their contributions to our worship this morning. Sheila Jones was our musician. Alex McCallum brought us our Bible reading and prayers of intercession. Robert Nielsen makes our online worship available for everyone. And I thank you too for joining us. I hope you have had a sense of God's presence with you as we worship together. And as we continue through Lent, may you continue to be open to the Spirit's leading as we walk towards our new future. Amen.